आज हमारा एक खास सेमिनार है वेबिनार बहुत हुए दो साल से आप लोग डिजिटल के माध्यम से अवेयर हुए एजुकेट हुए वो महासेवा हो या रोटरी के तमाम जो आ, हमारे अलग अलग लोगों के साथ में हमने किया तो मैं सबसे पहले आपको बता दूं आप जितने आज की नोट स्पीकर बड़ी मेहनत करते हैं अपने प्रेजेंटेशन के लिए आपको अवेयर करने के लिए एजुकेट करने के लिए दोस्तों तो आ, इन सभी के लिए आ, मैं यही कहूँगा कि जीवन में ऐसी सोच रखिए जीवन में ऐसी सोच रखिए जो खोया उसका गम नहीं जो खोया उसका गम नहीं पर जो पाया है वह किसी से कम नहीं जो नहीं है वह ख्वाब है जो नहीं है आज जो भी नहीं है वह ख्वाब है पर जो है वह लाजवाब है ये सब हमारे लिए लाजवाब है तालियां तो इनकी तारीफ नहीं कर रहा हूँ आप इनका प्रेजेंटेशन इनका जो पैनल में डिस्कशन सुनेंगे बिल्कुल ना ठाकरे साहब विजय जी तो इनका डिस्कशन सुनेंगे अनिल जी का आप प्रेजेंटेशन सुनेंगे तो आप भी लाजवाब कहेंगे तो सबसे पहले मैं स्वागत करते हैं और एक आप लोगों को बता दूं दोस्तों एज ए ऑडियंस पब्लिक की तरफ से जिंदगी में हर सुबह कुछ शर्त लेकर आती है शर्त मतलब सवाल जिंदगी में हर सुबह कुछ शर्त लेकर आती है और जिंदगी की हर शाम कुछ तजुर्बे देकर जाती है तजुर्बे मतलब उत्तर जिंदगी की हर सुबह कुछ शर्त लेकर आती है सवाल और जिंदगी की हर शाम कुछ तजुर्बे देकर जाती है तो आप यहाँ पे तजुर्बे देखेंगे ऐसे तजुर्बेकार लोगों के साथ में आपके जो सवाल हैं उनके जो जवाब मिलेंगे तो दोस्तों प्लीज़ वेलकम श्री नवनाथ घाड़गे साहब हैं जो एग्जीक्यूटिव इंजीनियर हैं तो प्लीज़ वेलकम सर Are being granted by the BMC. So 
So what is the flow of space in it? Basically, when you think about the development or the redevelopment of your own piece of land, it is not possible to redevelop for each and every society on their own. Self redevelopment is being promoted by the Prabhupada, but what we see actually on field while granting their role, majority of the developments are there by the developers only by way of development agreement. So, as a society, when you think about redevelopment of your own uh, society plot, along with that in the world. Basically, you should know what you are going to get. Then, on, then only you can negotiate with the developer and have a proper terms of that development agreement so that there won't be any further confusion and the development will take place in a proper phase by manner. Now, what is the basic FSI now available in the sub Earlier, in 1991, the basic FSI level was one, and over and above that, there was a one FSI initially as a TDR. Subsequently, that TDR was again split into two parts one was for the premium, and then the remaining was TDR. Government decided to take the generate the money out of that, so government took away the part of that TDR, and then that premium concept was introduced and government was selling that FSI in the form of the premium FSI and that premium which we were, we were getting was shared between the state government and the BNC and the planning authority 50-50% share. So, total in total there was two FSI, one basic and one premium plus TDR. Now what is the TDR? This terms I will first explain and then we will go so that we will understand everything. Before 1991 regulation, what we used to do is these reservation lands, whether it's a leaky road or RC reservation, PG reservation or other public purpose reservation, we used to acquire those lands by paying money, which is a public money. Corporation can acquire that piece of land. Monetary compensation was given. It was a basically public money. For a period of time, we came to know that the major portion of the, our funds was going in the cost of acquisition. So we requested the government to introduce this TDR concept. Then what is the TDR? In that case, Whatever is the development potential of the plot, that development potential was detached from that piece of land and it was given in the form of a certificate. And the transfer of development rights. So that certificate you can go in the market and you can sell it. And that piece of land you are, you are supposed to hand over to the BMC. And TDR you can sell it in the market. That was a basically reservation TDR. In case of 3310, entire admissible permissible FSI could not be consumed on a same plot because of that element density or some height restriction. In that case, that slump TDR will get standard. That also you can sell it in the market. Even in case of a property, say near to your uh, airport panel, it is not possible to consume the basic FSI also. So that unconsumed basic FSI also you can take it in the form of the DDR. In some plots, if there is a major setback, reminder plot or reminder plot, it may not be possible to consume, that also you can take it in the form of the DDR. Your choice. So these kind of the TDRs basically are being generated mainly as one TDR and the reservation TDR are the all categories which are under the reservation TDR. And in 30 minutes it is a slump TDR and then there is a ratio prescribing the regulation minimum 20% you have to 
sodium non PDR maximum 50% and rest you can take as a sodium PDR. This is how that different components of the FSI are there in the regulation. So, 30, 33, 38. The basic regulation in the DCPR 2034 is table 12, the regulation 38. And for the suburban area, depending upon the road width, the FSI is admissible. In all cases, if you see the basic FSI is what? It is uh, the basic FSI is 1 if the road width is less than 9 meter. From 9 to 12 meter, the basic FSI is 1, then the additional FSI on paying the premium is 0.5 and the TDR it can consume as a 0.5. If your road width is between 12 meter to the 18 meter, the basic FSI is 1, that is your right. Premium FSI in all cases it is 0.5. Whether it's the 9 meter width or the more than 24 meter, the premium FSI is 0.5, only TDR is very. So the, for the 12 to 18 meter TDR is 0.7, 18 to 27 meter width it is a 0.9, and if the road width is more than 27 meter, it is a 1. So maximum FSI available in the suburb, that's the it comes about to be 2.5, and the minimum is 1. If your road width is less than 9 meter. This is the basic FSI, premium FSI, and the TDR. Over and above, there is a continual FSI, which is 0.35% of this FSI. Now, in redevelopment, that continual FSI will again have two components. One will be a free continual, and the other will be by paying a premium, that fungible FSI component or fungible area component which is by paying a premium you can take it in the same. But the one which is claimed free of FSI, without paying a premium you cannot take it in the same. At the same time you cannot give a fungible FSI one member to the other member also. That is the restriction, clear restriction, clear step -based. So whenever the approvals are given, we are insisting for that matching statement for that consumer FSI so that it will be very clear what was my basic FSI, what was my basic area, then what is the fungible area claim against my area and what is proposed. So if the proposal is less than that, then that area we insist keeping a base. We are not at all allowing that area to be taken in a cell or to be given to the other member of the society as such. And I am really happy to inform you that we are 100% possible. PMC is the only planning authority in this city that we are 100% online, 100% transparent. No sickness at all. Is it? Yes, sir. BDA powder is here. Since 2015, we are online. You can access our each and every approval from any corner of the world. Only thing is, you have to go on our website. In that building plan approval system, then go to a citizen search. Just put that status number of the block. If you know the architect name or owner name, you just put it two fields you have to compose the repository, just click it, you will get the entire file. No need to come to my office. Access to the information, what is available, it is there on our portal. Number two is you can make an application from your office. Need not to come to my office. TDR utilization 100% online. So almost every step which is involved in the approval system, building the approval system, now we are 100% online. So that is the 
ease of doing business, we have now come to uh, I mean, uh, as far as PFC is concerned. Now, in case of societies which are direct duty, there are amendments in the Cooperative Society Act as well as PMC Act. You know, the, if the building today is more than 30 years, we have to carry out the structural audit compulsorily. And after carrying out the structural audit, if it comes to know that the building is extremely dilapidated and needs to be pulled down, in that case, that uh, notice under 354 of MMC, BMC Act comes and uh, we have to vacate that building and then subsequently pull down. Or if there is a difference of opinion, normally what happens, the landlord carries out the structural audit, then the occupants of the society members or the tenants, whosoever it may be, if they have another structural auditor and then the two uh, reports comes, one is C1 category, other is C2A or C3, something like that. And then the Difference of opinion is there. So the Bombay High Court has directed corporation to have a technical advisory committee, tax committee, and as per the directions of the Bombay High Court, we have a technical advisory committee every zone of building proposal department. Then that matter comes before that technical advisory committee, and the technical advisory committee takes a decision on that. If required, normally third point. Structural audit is also being insisted from the institute like Jetty or SPC or IIT Bombay, and that technical advisor takes a decision. That committee decision is binding on all parts, like the High Court order. You can challenge in the High Court, but normally High Court adopts that decision. And once that decision comes in, when the building is declared as a C1 category, that means it is extremely dilapidated and to be pulled down. In that case, this provision is available. Regulation 30A for redevelopment. And there are some incentives. <coughs> in the basic development, in case of open plot, you have to buy almost every MSI, every square feet of the MSI from the open market, whether it's the premium MSI or the TDR, TDR also you have to buy, premium MSI also you have to buy. But if the redevelopment comes over under the 30A in suburb, in that case, you will get an incentive. Whatever the area certified by our officers of the concert war, over and above that, you get an incentive of 50%. 50% incentive is admissible and the minimum area for the rehabilitation is uh, considered as a 300 square feet as for the government uh, notification of the provisions of that uh, regulation. So the existing bedroom area plus 50% will be now your entire area without paying anything. And if still there is an FSI available between uh, which is uh, as for the 30A and this after incentive that also you can consume. Now to develop that minimum uh, consent of 51% tenant is required. Tenancy existing on that uh, 13th June 1996 is admissible. That for that only tenant we consider that uh, as an admissible or uh, eligible. Uh, this of the tenants is to be certified by the concerned assistant commissioner of the ward. As soon as that building is declared as a dilapidated, uh, this is being certified by our designated officers and concerned assistant commissioner. That format is also fixed, it is circulated. Nothing is hidden as such. And once the single uh, pot is there, in that case 50%, if the two pots are there, 60% and so on. And occupiers are also eligible. If it's a single uh, building, then in that case 5% incentive is also uh, to be given back uh, for occupiers. And that shall be given. 
So if you give, if you uh, propose that five percent to that, then there are done only that incentive will be admissible. So regulations are very clear. And that architect as well as the developer has to give that matching statement and it is uploaded on the portal of that particular file in the additional document tab. So you can come to know that whether that area is with you and you can check with that uh, environment proposed to be allotted to you post development, whether that target area is matching to that or not. This is 30A. Next. Next regulation is 337B. Now the building is not dilapidated, but it is more than 30 years of age and we would like to develop it. So what is the admissible FSR? Available FSR to be as such. The basic FSI one is there. Now your, your building is having applicable plans, full CC, and government certificate. In that case, from the plan, you can ascertain what was the authorized built up area. 50% of that authorized built up area or 10 square meter per tenant, whichever is more, that is an incentive area. And for that you need not to pay anything. So existing is allowed plus this incentive. The rest you can take in the form of the premium FSI. Uh, balanced media. You can have a special provision in your development agreement to whom this benefit will go. 337 b Whether you would like to give it to the developer or it is to be given to each member. Finally, see, our aim is to get that property or the society there are so many factors which will decide the feasibility of that. It's not the case that all the time developers are making money. There are so many restrictions in the development regulation. Maybe by way of that uh, civil aviation, heritage, many, many. So we have to take into account all these factors and then decide in your university of course by way of your general body resolution to whom this benefit will go and accordingly plans are being happened. and we have a separate circular for that so we are transparent in this case also nothing is hidden it is up to you to know what the BMC is taking care of, and how these circulars and the regulations are being clearly spelled out. Ignorance of law is not an excuse. We should know what are the efforts taken by our planning authority, how transparently they are coming to the people. Once you know all these things, I think RTIs and complaints will stop. This is as far as the regulation 37B. For the cluster redevelopment, we have 339. For that, in suburban, I think minimum area is 6,000 square meters. In city, it is 4,000. And the first cluster in the suburban, just now I have approved, it is in KVS form. It's undertaken by the sweeper the developers and uh, with the chanda. Just now we have issued the Royal. There are more and more incentives are there. Are minimum is the rehabilitation is 75 square feet. Yeah, get an incentive. 
then relaxation in the plant, premium also, then minimum flow of wheat also. Recently, that uh, is amended now on uh, 4 meter, within uh, uh, 500 meter of uh, 80, 80 meter wheat road, it is also uh, allowed. If few properties are not uh, with you, then also you can include in that cluster and you can get the consent of those owners within one year from each of the ROI. These all provisions are there. Incentive based on that uh, uh, the CRR rates for the land and that ratio. 33 9 is more beneficial. But only thing is we have to have a land parcel of that uh, 6,000 square meter and for that uh, at least 5 to 6 societies should come together and uh, go for that 33 9 meter of it. Next. This, these are the various clauses in that uh, uh, 33 9. Next. This is a CRJ property. This is your concept. Sorry, I'm saying. This area is concept. Earlier, up to a 500 square meter from high tide line. STR. Uh, only one address I was at. This was because the regulation prior to that. What is it? Let me explain. In this area, it is built particularly up to a 500 square meter. 500 meter from uh, uh, STL. DC regulations of 1967 were to be used, and the FSI box available was only one. Our 1991 regulation was allowed two FSI, but for the CRJ2, only one FSI was available. So, if you see this bit, the society will not be legal. Now, uh, the basic road, first contribution of MOM came in uh, on that 19th February 1991. As 1991 uh, regulations were approved, after that, 91 regulations were not applicable in CRJ area. Next notification came on uh, 6 January 2011. Then it is June 2019 and CJ Act for that 18th June 19, 2019 were approved on 29th September 2021. Now, FSI, FIR norms which are available to all not today as per notification of 18th June 2019 are applicable in CRJ2 area. Whatever the FSI FIR is available in 2034 because that 2034 regulations were approved prior to that notification. So, as per 2034, whatever the FSI is admissible, that is allowed in CRJ to area. We have approved so many proposals now, almost 8 to 10 proposals I have approved. In this area also, within 500 meters, subjected to a final NOC from MCZDI. And they have also issued the MCZDI NOC. Now we are giving them the government certificate too. So this is uh, now a uh, basic game changer in, for your area. And you can go for this kind of development. And uh, you see the market takes, I think, this uh, street is more attractive as compared to the MIKH area or the other part of the KVS. This is our attempt as a MC, BMC World Bank carried out the survey for the building permits different kind of the process in all different countries with their ranks and now see how we have improved now we are we were in 2019 at the rank of 52. Uh, 
Now we are up to us, Deva. Can you imagine to what extent that BMC has taken an effort to improve the ranks and make these construction permits process user friendly and accessible to the people? You can see the number of projects, how we have reduced earlier. Then the time taken earlier to be to take 93 days for approval. Steam approval clause was there in regulation, stipulates 60 days. If you won't approve that within the 60 days, it is deemed to be approved. But that is only when no concessions are required. And in Mumbai, city of the Mumbai area, not a single wedding is possible without concessions. So legal provision was there, but no one, no one was getting benefited. But with all these, all these efforts, what I said, now from 93 days, we have reduced up to a 45 days, now we are in that time schedule. Even in uh, December, uh, that stretch, within 8 days also we have approved the process. We are working day and night. <laughs> and I can say proudly, even in spite of this COVID, not a single proposal was held up. We were working online fully, with full capacity, and all approvals were granted by the VMC. There are stakeholders, there are associations, architects, and in spite of reduction in the speed of 50 percent, December and that uh, August, our portion was able to get a revenue of 13,000 crore. It's a public money will be used for development of the city, and all these approvals are. Granted already. No physical approval. 100% transfer. This is all about what are the regulations available and how there, there are clear provisions in the regulations, what are the different provisions in the regulations for the benefit of the individual members, what is the FSI available? How you need to take care by entering into a development agreement. And that your development agreement also clearly stipulates whether there is a provision for termination either side. Because we are getting lot of complaints. There is a development stuck at a middle level and then society terminates unilaterally, developer also goes in a mode. And for years to come, the, these pro projects are being held up. So while entering into a development agreement, be careful to whom these benefits will be given, what will be the tenure for that for time period for development, what will be the uh, provision for getting that purposeful to take care of the uh, enhancement of the property access post development, what will be the right you will be getting during the course of that development, what will be the period. All these clauses needs to be clearly spelled out in your development agreement. Then I think then only you can have a smooth development, there won't be any problem in the development on either side, the developer or the society members, and minimum complaints we will receive, our time will be saved, and we will be able to give more and more services to our people and Thank you.